Hello there everybody, Sam's Trains here, welcome back to the railway and welcome to another review. We are being spoilt rotten at the moment because today I have yet another brand new loco from Acura Scale. <laughs> This brand new model then is of course the all new Mana Class by Acura Scale. Obviously though this is not the only new Mana Class that we've seen recently. Just last year I did a review of the Loco you can see behind me, that is the Dapple Mana Class which was new for 2022. And I thought that Loco was great, you can check out the review if you want to. It came out with a great score and it was much cheaper than Acura Scales Mana Class at £140.72 at the retailers, whereas the Acura Scale Mana is £169.99. But more recently, something has changed with the Dapple Mana Class. They've actually increased the price. So now if you want to buy one from the retailers, it'll set you back £151.97. That's an increase of about 8%. Now that is very interesting because one of the key advantages of the Dapol Manor was that it was significantly cheaper than Acura Scales. Now that they've increased the price, the two models are now within £20 of each other, they've significantly eroded that price advantage. And that could be a problem for Dapol because Acura Scale do have a habit of blowing other manufacturers out of the water with their new releases. And Dapol have less than £20 of headroom before Acura Scale catches them up. And looking at the specs of the Acura Scale Manor, they could well beat Dapol at their own game here. Which would be a shame for Dapol. I think they are a great manufacturer. They've done a lot in terms of innovation and service to the hobby in terms of keeping prices low. However, if the Acura Scale Manor is better, then it is, and my review will have to show that. So here it is, the new Acura Scale Manor, available now for £169.99, and I've got some affiliate links in the description. Let's get inside and let's see what this is actually like. So here we go then with Acura Scale's first ever steam locomotive. Really curious to see whether they've hit the ground running with this one. As you can see, it's the same kind of packaging that we've seen before from Acura Scale, except noticeably this one is quite a bit lighter than the other Acura Scale boxes I've handled, but that does make sense because obviously those were all big heavy diesels and electrics. They do tend to be much heavier than steam locos, so hopefully this will still be heavy for a steam loco because Acura Scale have become known for the sheer weight and heft of their locos. Let me show you the end of the box then. So the version I've got here is the Great Western Manor Locomotive, number 7812, Earlstoke Manor, and it is ACC 25007812. This is in the BR lined green with the late crest, and it is era 5. I really wanted to get one of these with the lining because I want to see how Acura Scale have applied that. So with that, let's open up the box and let's see if we can get our first look at the Acura Scale Manor. This is very, very exciting. The first steam loco from a manufacturer is always such an exciting thing. So let's start by having a look at the information booklet here. I assume this, as usual from Acura Scale, will be full of information. It's a Great Western two cylinder 78XX Manor locomotive. Oh, look at this. Oh, these are just so great. So we've got a diagram of the cylinders here photographs, history. You see, this is why Acura Scale are good. It seems like everything they release comes with this much information because the 37 did, I believe the Deltic did, everything does. And while Dapol do produce great paperwork and documentation, um, it wasn't quite to this extent, was it? So that is marvellous. Let's have a look at the other booklet, which I assume will be more to do with the actual model. So here you've got a bit about unpacking, intended use, whatever. That's pretty standard stuff. Ah, inside, we've got the exploded diagram here, which shows the sheer number of different parts that go into this loco. A little bit tricky to interpret what this means in terms of mechanism, so I will be interested to see that later on. You've also got a bit about buffer beam detailing on the side, front couplings, etc., and also cylinder detail parts fitting. Looks like there's quite a bit to do there if you want to. Um, oh, here we've got the 78XX tender. 
which seems quite complicated for a tender, doesn't it? And it goes into all of this detail, buffer beam fitting again, and also some of the detail for the front of the tender, if you want to fit that. Here you've got the range of manners, as you can see, all sorts of different liveries, BR blacks, Great Western greens, BR greens. Do check out the range if you're interested using those affiliate links. Fitting the decoder, this is interesting. So if you remember the Dapol Manor, you had to open the smoke box door and insert the decoder into that loco. With this one, it's showing that we have to disassemble the tender, which suggests that that is where the DCC decoder is. So what does that mean for the Acura scale loco? Well, that tells me that there will be more room inside the loco for a better motor, maybe more weight, etc. It could mean that Acura scale have sacrificed some of the ease with which you can chip this loco in order to make the loco heavier and better. Hopefully that is what's going on here. And then you've got some general care here, lubrication, etc. And also a bit about fitting crew, although I don't believe any crew comes with this loco. It's talking about visiting their website to purchase some if you want to. They're 3D printed in color. All right, so with that, it is time to look at the loco. So let's peel back this foam. Ah, there it is, or well, sort of. Yeah, it's very hard to get eyes on it at the moment, but there's certainly a loco in there, which is great news. I would be rather peeved if it was missing. All right, so we'll look at that in a moment. Let me just pull out the accessories. And gosh, there's rather a lot, isn't there? Okay, first thing first, look at this. Excellent quality etched nameplates. Look at those, they shine incredibly. So that's a great start. I think the Dapol Manor came with etched number plates, but I don't remember any etched nameplates, at least not supplied separately. So you've got that. This does also have the etched number plates and look at the quality of those parts. <laughs> If this doesn't set the precedent for the model, then I don't know what does. Look at the lining on them. Oh, wow, okay. We've then got another accessories bag which has another etched detail piece, or is that a plastic piece that's been painted? I don't know, but that's a headboard that says the Cambrian Coast Express. I didn't realize it came with that. And I think we've got another different one here, yeah. That's the Pembroke Coast Express. What a bonus that is, that's very, very awesome. We've got all of the details that were shown in the accessories pack, and we've also got screw link couplings, which are the fully working articulated type. Wow, so at the moment, it looks as though all bases are covered, and that's just the paperwork and the accessories. I think now we need to look at the engine. So, big moment. I've heard a lot about this, I've read a lot about the specs, but I've never seen one in the flesh, I don't think. Did they have samples at Worley? Can't remember now. Yeah, I think they did. But I've never handled one, so this is going to be a first. Here we go then. Massive blister pack here. You ready to see the finish? I'm expecting great things from this. Here we go. Ooh, yes. Look at that. Look at the rich, rich shade of green on the boiler there. That looks sublime, doesn't it? It really does. Right, so I don't know whether the loco and tender are coupled. I don't even know how that works on this loco. But yeah, they do seem to be. So let's lift up this loco. And good God, yeah, this is crazy. Do you know what? The weight of this loco is absolutely unbelievable. Why? Because it's die cast. Yeah, for less than 20 pounds more than the Dapol loco, We've got a die-cast firebox, boiler, smoke box, and running plate. The Dapol Loco was plastic, except for the chassis and the running plate, which were die-cast. As a result, this weighs a ton. Yeah, this is incredibly heavy and very, very impressive as a result. I will, of course, get this on the scales in just a second, and I'll let you know what exactly this weighs with a bit of a comparison with Dapol's. But on first impression, that is very, very impressive. And also look at this, look at the paintwork, look at the detail. It really does look great. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. We have the all new Acura Scale Manor. On first glance, was it worth the wait? Yes, <laughs> it certainly was. I'm absolutely blown away by the quality of this. All right then, so a brief background on the Manor in real life, and then I will show you this up close. And for that, I am really, really excited. 
The Great Western Manor class, or the GWR7800 class, was a fleet of 30 460 tender locos introduced between 1938 and 1939. The Manor was a lighter version of the Grange class, which granted them wider route availability, allowing them to traverse more of the railway network, where heavy locos were forbidden. The class also shared many parts with the 4300 moguls, which made maintenance and servicing much simpler. Even though the Grange locomotives on which the manors were based performed outstandingly, the manors were actually very disappointing to begin with, although a number of improvements did help to mitigate these issues. They then continued in service until their withdrawal, which eventually took place between 1963 and 1965, with 21 examples being scrapped and a fantastic nine remaining under preservation. So there she is up close and personal for you, the tremendous Acura scale manor class in the BR Green. And yeah, as you can clearly see, this is an incredible model. And the fact that Acura scale have been able to pull off a virtually entirely die cast locomotive for £170 really does put those other manufacturers to shame with their plastic bodies and much higher prices. Let's talk about the weight to start with then. So just as a reminder, the Dapol Manor class came in at 352 grams, which is very respectable thanks to its die cast running plate. But of course, due to its die cast boiler, firebox, smoke box and running plate, as well as the chassis presumably, the Acura scale Manor is quite a lot heavier at 409 grams. That is a 16% increase over the Dapol. And for me, that settles the 10% increase in price over the Dapol Manor. But hold your horses though, I'm not going to go ahead and say that Acura Scale wins just yet, because Dapol's Manor actually holds its own very nicely. And in fact, in many areas, the Dapol model is much more finessed than Acura Scales. Let's jump into this. So, looking at the riveting on the Acura Scale running plate mainly, it stands out from all of my other Great Western Locos as looking very chunky, particularly at the front of the running plate. It's really giving me Hornby Dublo diecast vibes. Looking at the Dapol running plate, the riveting here looks much finer and it matches the other Great Western Locos in my fleet much better. Similarly, look at the finish on the safety valve bonnet of the Acura Scale Manor. It looks okay, but not dreadfully metallic. If we switch to the Dapol, you can see this electroplated finish looks much, much better. Also, look at the fit of the chimney on the Acura Scale Manor here. There's a very distracting gap all the way around where the chimney is fitted into the body. With the Dapol Manor, we've got nothing like that. The chimney looks like a seamless part of the body and it looks much better as a result. Look at the coal load of the Acura Scale Manor. This is not great looking coal, particularly when we compare it with the Dapol coal load, which looks miles better. Look at the difference there. That is quite significant. And of course, you've also got the drawbar slash coupling set up. Here on the Acura Scale Loco, we've got a metal drawbar at the bottom and then all of the wires on a separate plug up at the top. With Dapol, we've got a single snap together drawbar, which is much easier to connect and disconnect. So again, Dapol's is more convenient and more subtle. So for me, at least that brings us back to square one. The Acura scale is the heavier loco with more metal on board, but the Dapol version has a lot more finesse. So it's not clear which is better yet. Having said that, there is a lot of finesse in the Acura Scale model. If I was reviewing this on its own without the Dapol example to hand, I might not have noticed some of the things I've just mentioned. And so let's take a look at the Acura Scale Manor now in its own right, and let's also talk about what it does better than the Dapol version. So first of all, the decoration is excellent. I think the finish looks pretty good. Nice satin finish on the boiler at least, although the smoke box, as you can see, has been treated to a matte finish which is accurate, that is how they look in real life, and yet I've never, to my knowledge, seen that replicated in model form. So that is a bit of a first, and it's a real step up in terms of realism, really like that. The banding on the boiler is absolutely excellent, I cannot fault this, the accuracy there is spot on, and the lining elsewhere on the model is perfect too, whether that be on the splashes or the side of the cab and even the number plate printed onto the side of the cab looks fantastic, although there is an etched one for you to fit. 
Same thing with the Earlstoke Manor nameplate. This looks absolutely fine, and I believe it is a metal piece, but if you wanted an upgrade, you've got a free one included in the accessories bag, which is great. The cylinders are also fully painted, as you can see, with the lining on them, and the cylinder drain cocks and other small valves have also been picked out, which is great. While the base of the chimney on the Acura Scale Manor doesn't look much good, the top of the chimney does. That looks like real copper, if you ask me, which is a step up over the just painted plastic finish of the Dapol Manor, so that's a massive thumbs up. Let's take a look at some of the details then. So the wheels are particularly impressive on this Loco. They do look cast, I'm going to go ahead and say, and there's some nice detail moulded onto those. The coupling and connecting rods are also cast as well, and I remember Acura Scale saying that they did this to try and give the impression of weight in these rods, and I must say they've been successful here. Also, the piston and the crosshead assembly is all cast metal this time, whereas on the Dapol version, I believe those parts were just plastic, and that didn't look quite so good. So, yeah, there's an improvement here as well. Here's a look at the buffer beam, which is nicely painted, and it's got lots of riveting on it. Obviously, there are more details you can fit here if you want to, but we do already have the vacuum pipe pre-fitted and the metal buffers, which are sprung. And they're very, very stiffly sprung as well, to the point where if you were to use the screw link couplings, these buffers could actually have a legitimate use. So that's cool. We've also got lamp brackets on the running plate, which are remarkably straight. I like the look of that. And the smoke box door looks good and realistic as well. In its matte finish, it also has the running number, shed code, separately fitted smoke box dart and lamp bracket fitted on there as well. So it's the complete package. The boiler has the very, very fine wire handrails fitted to it, and those look great. Beneath the boiler, we do have a representation of the valve gear, which is also separately painted. Dapol had this as well, and I think both models look much, much better for this. Very, very impressive. Around the other side, the reverser rod is a particularly impressive piece here. It's got multiple different painted sections. It looks very, very realistic, and all of the accompanying pipework here also looks tremendous. The whistles are also quite impressive. They are made of plastic, but they have been painted to a high standard, and even the pipework connecting those whistles has been painstakingly picked out as well. The cab has the glazed windows, which have the painted window frames. That looks great. We've also got separately fitted handrails, as well as a poseable tender full plate, which looks great. And the cab detail itself is very impressive too. There are lots of separately fitted components here. The gauges have been picked out very finely, which is great to see. And there's something quite interesting going on with the firebox here. It looks as though there's a gel in front of the LED, assuming there is an LED, I think so, isn't there? which will hopefully illuminate to give a sort of coal fire texture to it. I'm really interested to see how that looks. Stay tuned for that in just a moment. The tender is also excellent. The paintwork and finish all looks wonderful, and the lining is just as high quality as on the Loco. The axle box detail looks great as well. Look at all of this. And those cast wheels look fantastic too, with their separately fitted brake rigging and also water scoop. At the front, there is the usual array of controls, which have all been very nicely fitted. And although the coal load is quite disappointing and unrealistic, behind the coal load, we've got the water filler cap, which is openable. So you could actually park this next to your water tower, open up the cap, and fully simulate refilling the tender with water. Now that is a cool little feature. Around the back, you've got more printed detail, including these warning signs for the overhead lines, and also a little tiny builder's plate, which is also legible. You've got these very, very fine separately fitted steps, which look like they could be etched metal parts, that's awesome. Another very detailed buffer beam with sprung buffers, and then below there we've got the coupling, which is NEM obviously, and also kinematic. It's got a very smooth motion to it. Hopefully that will be at the right height and will couple correctly. So there you have it. I think for £170, this is excellent value at the moment. The weight and the quality of the build is incredibly high. And while I think Dapol's model does beat it in terms of finesse, I wouldn't say this is a particularly sloppy model. And for the most part, it has been put together very, very well. Having said that, the Acura Scale Manor here is kind of one step up from Dapol in terms of the weight and quality, but then a step down in terms of finesse. So we're not actually any closer to deciding which manor is the best. 
and I'm hoping that one of these manners will stride ahead on the next section of the review, which is of course the mechanism and the performance. So let's get this Acura scale manner down onto the track, let's get it tested, and let's also find out what it's like on the inside. So there she is, Acura Scale's exquisite manner down onto the track, and this is a wonderful looking loco, that's for sure. I've already filmed the first performance test, and I'll show you how that went in just a second. Now though, I want to talk about the mechanism, which I investigated after running this loco in. Yeah, the mechanism is okay, I would say. The quality of it is high and everything, but there are some strange design decisions that have gone into this, um, which make it a little bit awkward to sort of use and chip, particularly. That places this below DAPL in terms of mechanism, in my opinion. I also feel that they've made a couple of unnecessary compromises in the Locos mechanism, and I'll show you what I mean by that in just a second. But let's start with the positive. Lots of pickups on this Loco, so the tender wheels all pick up, that's great to see. The Loco drivers do have pickups, but these are not visible from the outside, which I guess is a good thing. To see those then, we have to remove the base keeper plate. First, here's a quick look at the drawbar. On the tender end, it has a kinematic style coupling. On the loco end though, it's just a kind of peg design, which has a close coupling option. Although, when I tried this, as you can see, it is very, very, very close. So unless you've got virtually realistic curves, you're going to want to leave it set so that the tender is coupled further apart from the loco. As you can see, there's certainly nothing wrong with the close coupling of this. Right, onto the base keeper then. So four screws make this removable. And as you can see, the base keeper does come off, but there are no pickups attached to this. They're actually connected to the Loco chassis. And to access and clean those, you have to lift the Loco wheels out of their slots where you can finally see the wiper pickups. So you can clean them and you don't have to sort of destroy the model to access them, which is good, but it's not quite as convenient as with some. We've also got these very large and heavy duty bearings, which I like to see. And heavy duty is definitely a theme here because the gears are certainly very large and chunky ones as well, which suggests good quality. But here's where things start to get interesting. The body removal on first glance looked to be very simple because there was just two screws holding the body on, one at the front, one at the back. But the electrical plug that connects the loco and tender loops through the loco body which means you can't just pull the chassis out without disconnecting that plug from the tender and then threading it through the body. Why did they do that? That's so bizarre. Well, I guess the reason is that they didn't want you seeing the puny three-pole motor that they've used inside. Yep, this is the same size motor that Hornby use in their Peckett locomotives. And here it is inside the Acura Scale Manor with a tiny flywheel as well. Now, I get it, Acura Scale are fanatical about loco detail, and by cramming all of the motor and drivetrain into the loco firebox, they've been able to avoid splitting the bottom of the boiler to allow a larger chassis to slide in and out of it. But spoiler alert, they have sacrificed some of the loco's performance by doing that. And personally, I don't think this was the right call. I didn't notice the lack of a split in the boiler, However, I did notice the hit that performance has taken as a result. So obviously model making is about compromise. I think you just have to make the right compromises so as not to too negatively impact the model. Yeah, it's a very strange decision. Why a three-pole motor too? There are other options that would be much better like a coreless motor. And of course, Dapol's manner still looked good and that used a much larger, chunkier five-pole motor, which did perform better. Again, spoiler alert. Here is the LED module, which is a very, very interesting design. You can certainly see it better as well now that the body's off. And you'll notice also that the body is connected with wires and such, and that's because there are pre-fitted speakers inside the loco boiler. So that's great if you wanted to chip this with sound. So in terms of chipping this loco, again, there is a stark contrast here between Acura Scale and Dapol. With Dapol, this job takes seconds and it's very easy. With Acura Scale, the opposite is true. There are four screws to undo on the base of the tender. Some of them are beneath the wheels, which makes things very awkward indeed. And once those screws were undone, you can see that the plug is actually attached to the tender body, which means unless you want a very awkward time indeed, you've got to find a way to undo that plug and then try and chip the loco and do everything you need to do with the body still attached by the wires. 
yeah, this is a dramatically inconvenient way of chipping a loco compared with Dapol solutions. So you can see what I mean. I prefer Dapol's by a long way. Anyway, there's a next 18 pin DCC socket inside. And once you get to that, there won't be any problems chipping this. And then the gauge comes in at 14.3 to 14.4, which is very close to the standard. So it's a high quality mechanism on the one hand, but a poor mechanism in the sense that it's very awkward to access and chip. And that motor is a very, very strange choice indeed. But the performance is okay. It's not amazing, but it's okay. Let me show you how that performance test went. All right then, the moment of truth. This loco looks incredible. The quality is outstanding, but does it have the performance to match? That's what we need to find out. So does it work? Forwards direction. Let's give it some juice and see. Here goes, first ever run. Yep, it's moving. And I have to say, seems to be nice and smooth. The motion looks excellent. I see what they mean about casting those rods. Yeah, there is a certain weight to those, isn't there? Um, yeah, it seems to be great. I must say it seems to be absolutely fine. It's quiet and it's certainly not noisy. And at these speeds, it seems to be pretty smooth. What is the speed like? Let's run past at 50 and I'll demonstrate the gearing for you. Uh, not terribly slow locos manners, so kind of a bit of grunt to it. Yeah, that's 50. Yeah, all right, so quite speedy. What about full speed? Can it really go for it? Oh yeah, okay, so it's got quite a range of speeds to it. I'll give it that. Um, I would say it's quite sensible though. Yeah, there's nothing untoward there. Assuming, of course, it can crawl nicely. So it hasn't been running yet. If it doesn't crawl great at the moment, obviously I will have to let this run in before casting any judgment. But straight out of the box, what is the crawl like? Three pole motor advertised. Does it perform as well as a five pole? I'm easing this up. Hmm, that's the speed at which it cut in. Let's try it again in reverse and just check that that is repeatable. Turning up, turning up. Oh, yeah, that's about as slow as I can maintain. That's not very good. It might improve, so I'm not going to sort of condemn it right now, but, you know, you fit a three-pole motor, it better be a pretty darn good one if it's going to match the five-polers, and frankly, this doesn't. Nope, the Dapol Loco was able to crawl much, much better than this. But I guess we need to run this in before I can sort of put that down as the final judgment. Before we do, let's just see what the torque is like. So, fingers on the buffers, let's go up to 50. Yep, yeah, it's got enough torque to turn its wheel, so there seems to be some decent power there. Right, let's run it in. There's quite some way to go before this is as good a performer as the Dapol was out of the box. So, let's go ahead and see how it gets on around the layout. Alright, so here she goes. It is quite fast, I will say that. No slowing down around the curves though, which is great. I have to wonder then whether it's partly the gearing which is favoring the higher speeds over the lower speeds. Uh, but again, they could possibly improve as this runs in. Other than that though, yeah, it looks marvelous as it runs along. It is clearly very smooth. You can tell there's a high quality mechanism behind this loco, which is great. And the other thing that I've noticed is the firebox lighting, which is incredibly bright. It is almost blinding actually, <laughs> if you look at it. So yeah, here's a close-up of that. It's not very subtle, this. Uh, I don't know whether the brightness would be any different on DCC, but here on analog, yeah, you can certainly notice it. It's very, very bright indeed. And I think that's good. You know, some loco firebox flickers, they are a little bit too subtle. You can't notice them. Uh, this is the kind of opposite end of that spectrum. It's impossible not to notice this one. So yeah, comment down below. Let me know what you think. Is this overboard or does it look good? Please do let me know. Anyway, let me continue to run this in, and when we come back, I'll do some more testing, and we'll see if that crawl is any better. Okay, folks, there we go. That is running in complete. And yes, things did go absolutely fine there. No derailments, no real slowing down on the curves or anything, maybe slightly on the second radius, but certainly nothing much. I would say the torque is certainly better than Dapol's. Yeah, that one slowed down a lot more on the curves. This one doesn't, but of course it didn't have much of a crawl to it. 
or at least it didn't when it was fresh out of the box. What is it like now that it's run in? Is it any better? Frankly, I doubt it, having seen that puny little three-pole motor. Um, but let's see, I'm easing it up now on the controller, very, very slowly to try and get the exact moment at which this cuts in. Nope, that's as slow as it goes. Now, can I slow down into a crawl, having done that? Let's try and see if I can. Slow down, slow down. Nope, it just stops. So, yeah, I have to say the crawl is poor here compared with Dapol's, which was excellent. Dapol's had its own issues, like I say, with torque, so I suppose they're both slightly flawed. But, uh, yeah, a Cura scale versus Dapol, you've got to make the choice between torque and being able to crawl. And uh, it's a pity that neither model offered perfect performance in both areas. I'm trying it in reverse right now. Oh, yeah, it seems a little better. I'm trying to slow down into it, but it just stops. Yeah, look at that. It just can't sustain it. So, yeah, they've sacrificed the Loco's performance by trying to make the boiler more realistic. I assume that's why they've done it. Uh, why else would you want to cram the entire mechanism into the firebox like that? Uh, so, yeah, that's a pity. But, like I say, the torque's okay. Let me demonstrate that. Just back up a touch. Yeah, it's okay. Slows down quite a bit, but it doesn't stop, which is the main thing. And the pulling power is certainly better than Dapol's at 0.44 newtons, which is around 27 coaches on straight and level track. And obviously it can do that without slowing down to a stall either, so pretty decent. So to test that, I've set up five X Great Western coaches in a BR maroon livery. I'm hoping that will look nice. With that, let's go and test the couplings and check that everything is okay in that department. Here we go. Yeah, it's a great pity that I can't back up to this as carefully as I'd like because, as you can see, it just stops. Oh, yeah, it's not as controllable as Dapol's. Um, and the coupling hooks do seem to loll to the left and right a bit, although, as you can see, once I pulled forward, that engaged properly. Let's at least attempt a nice gentle start with the coaches then. Uh, the aim is not to throw all the passengers onto the ground with the sudden start. So I'm easing up. And it Mm. Yeah, it was almost better with a load, but then it kind of stopped again until I turned it up further. So, yeah, not great, not great. But once you're up above a crawl, it does seem to be okay, and we'll catch up with that in just a second. On the inside line, then, I'm running the Dapol Manaclass. Let's speed this up and bring it in. And I don't want to poo on the Acura Scale Manor too much because, like I say, these have torque issues because of their motors. I don't think those are the most powerful in the world. But at least they've got a bit of substance to them and at least they can crawl. Let me try and demonstrate that. It is moving there, folks. <laughs> so, yeah, crawl much better. Torque a little bit less good. It does slow down quite dramatically on some curves, this one. Which, to be fair, the Acura Scale one doesn't. So, yeah, it is a toss-up. What do you value most? And then here's the embarrassing thing. On the inside line, we've got the old split chassis Backman Manor, which has none of these issues. I believe it can crawl. Yeah. Perhaps not as good as the Dapol, but it can crawl. And it certainly doesn't slow down on curves. So I think on balance, this is the best runner. Yeah, the old 20-year-old or whatever it is. Split chassis Backman Manor runs better than both of the new ones. <laughs> So go figure. But Acura Scales Manor is fantastic, don't get me wrong. And at the higher speeds, it is a fine performer. As you can see, it's not slowing down too much on these curves. Torque not absolutely incredible, but certainly more than enough to haul a decent load around a curve without a terribly noticeable slowdown. It also looks fantastic from any sort of distance. I think the issues with the finesse are more noticeable up close. I think once it's running along on the track, those are much easier to overlook. So it is a great model in many, many ways, don't get me wrong. And I think what they achieved here for £170 is above and beyond what quite a few other manufacturers are offering. And also the increase in price over the Dapol version is very much warranted here because of the extra metalwork. So you pay a little bit more for the Acura scale version, you get quite a bit more weight. So I think the value is very similar between the two. 
but there are lots of other differences. There are detailed differences. Obviously, the mechanisms are very different and the performance between the two is very different as well. So while they are gonna come out with a very similar score from me, they actually score and lose points in quite different areas, which is fascinating, isn't it? Two different manner models, which have been approached and designed very differently from each other. So this has been fascinating to film and really enjoyable as well. And I hope you've enjoyed discovering this with me. And now some ratings then for the Great Western Manor from Acura Scale. The level of detail is tremendous here. We've got the incredible decoration, the great finish, the matte finished smoke box. I've never seen that before. You've got the etched nameplates, number plates, a choice of a couple of headboards, sprung buffers, detailed cab with lighting inside there. This is just to name a few of the features this Loco has. I would say that this Loco has more detail, in fact, than the Dapol Manor, but the way in which some of this detail has been realized actually isn't quite as good. You've got the chunky looking molding on the running plate, you've got the finish of the safety valve bonnet, the fit of the chimney, the lack of finesse in the coal load. So for that, I am gonna place this just below Dapol on detail at 4.5 star, because I think while Dapol did maybe a tiny bit less detail, they didn't bite off more than they could chew and they actually made their model look more finessed in my opinion. The performance is very good on this Acura Scale Manor, but I've given it four star because it just can't crawl. That's really unfortunate given what Acura Scale's other models have performed like and how other models in the industry run as well. Having said that, it is very smooth and reliable. It does have decent torque around the curves and such, even with a load, and it's not a particularly noisy loco either. I do think maybe the gearing could have been altered slightly to favor the lower speeds, but more importantly, a better motor was needed to produce that torque at the low speeds. The pulling power though, thanks to all of the Loco's metalwork, is pretty good at 0.44 newtons or 27 coaches on straight and level track. That's about the same as a Hornby 9F, so pretty good going there, I would say. The mechanism on the whole is a quality one, but there are some things that let it down. But let's start with the positives. You've got lots and lots of pickups on all of the tender wheels and all of the loco driving wheels. You've got proper bearings on the loco axles, and you've also got decent access to those axles and the pickups for servicing. However, removing the loco and tender bodies for servicing and also DCC fitting is a nuisance compared with Dapol's very intuitive system of getting access to the innards. Also, that motor, that very puny three-pole motor. I am surprised that a Cura scale of all people didn't use a better motor than this. They are great motors, like I say, but not in a loco as large as this. And in this case, the model really doesn't crawl that well as a result. So I've knocked it down a couple of stars to three star. The quality though is a five for me. This model is quite a bit cheaper than similar locos from Hornby and Backman, yet this is almost entirely made of metal where the loco is concerned. And as a result, the quality of this model is excellent. It feels super robust. Obviously, there's no warping in the running plates and the weight is wonderful as a result. It's also been put together very well. There's no issue issues in the decoration. Value for money then, while this is a little more expensive than Dapol's by around 10%, I do think the value for money here is equally good given the additional features that this model has, mainly all of that die cast in the body. I think for £169.99, you could not ask for a more reasonable price for this loco. It's a very complex loco, it's very high quality, yet it has a lot of features many more in fact than on some of Acura Scale's competitors models, so it is a 5 star. Overall then that is a great score of 8.95 out of 10 or a grade of A, that's what I like to see. Into the logbook it goes in 4th place above the SD60E by Athern and below Acura Scale's own Class 92, so it's a highly recommendable model. However my score here is a little bit less than it was for the Dapol Manor, so I would say I prefer the Dapol Manor just by a hair. Now don't get me wrong, both of these models are excellent and I could certainly recommend both models. Which one you go for though will depend on what sort of a model you are and what sort of qualities you look for. Well folks, that will just about do it for my review of the new Acura Scale Mana Class, which is very beautiful indeed. What do you think about it? Do you think I've been fair? Do you think there are things I've overlooked? Have I been too harsh? Please do let me know. 
Also, which manner do you think is best? If you've not seen my Dapol review, check that out and leave a comment either on that video or on this one to let me know which one you think is best and why. And let me know which one you would go for or maybe have already gone for if you had to make the choice. For me, I think the Dapol one just about wins, but there's really not that much in it. And there are aspects of the Acura scale manner which I think are much better than Dapol's, such as the level of detail and obviously the massive weight due to all of the metal construction. I can't help it, I love metal locos, and that's one of my favourite aspects of the Acura Scale Manor. So there are definitely pros in Acura Scales, despite it being slightly weaker overall, I think. But that should just about do it. Thank you so much for tuning in to yet another review, and I will see you again very, very soon. So thank you again for watching. I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers, folks.